Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Today, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with you. Um, the bottle of wine that you have, uh, that I have in front of you, is from Jason Stevens. Jason Stevens uh, is a winery that's, to me, I, I feel like it's right down the street. Uh, it's on the back roads between Morgan Hill and, and Gilroy. Um, and they make some really good wines. This is uh, one of, of two places where Kara and I are members, the other one being um, Ridge. And uh, so as such, because we are members, you know, I don't um, really like to rate their wines, although I think they're all fantastic. Um, but they do have this one wine. It's the 2010 Estate Rosé. Um, it's the first rosé that they've ever done. They're really um, more well-known for their Cabernets and their Merlots and, and their Chardonnays. Um, this is their first rosé. It may be their only. I don't know if they're, if they're going to do them again. Um, and this is 100% Cabernet Franc. Kara uh, opened this up to go with our uh, dinner tonight, which looks and smells pretty sweet. I'm getting uh, excited about that. Um, and I, I thought what I'd do is uh, I'd try this and give you a few tasting notes. Um, and then I wanted to uh, show you some, some swag that I got, too. So this is the 2010 Estate Rosé from Jason Stevens. Again, 100% Cabernet Franc. Um, and... You know, on the nose, there's some really good minerality. There's a little bit of cranberry on this. You know, when we're talking rosé, sometimes people see the pink color and they think it's going to be like a, like a white Zinfandel. These wines are, are dry. Uh, some good, like, citrus notes on the nose. And now I'm going to go in and taste a little bit. Wow, and there's that nice, crisp, citrus acidity kind of running through as I'm talking to you right now. Um, there is a little bit of like, uh, like a little cranberry. There is a little bit of um, grapefruit. Some good minerality on this. Just a really nice, dry, crisp wine that, that goes well with foods. You know, normally when, when we think of rosé, we think of... Uh, summertime and and I know it's on the tail end of winter it's finally starting to feel kind of wintry uh in this area but you know it's a good wine the real reason why I wanted to do this show today was really to talk to you about uh this thing the wine shield so one of my <clears throat> blogging buddies uh Jeff from the Lonely Vine uh he was doing a couple episodes about uh, different closure systems for your wines. And uh, one that I'd never heard of that he started talking about was the uh, wine shield. Well, anyways, you know, just in talking, he decided to send me some wine shields uh, a while back. Um, but while they were in transport, um, the, the envelope ripped open and, and nothing really arrived except for a really nice letter from him. Thank you. That was very nice, Jeff. Um, so I tweeted Jeff about it. Uh, mentioned Wine Shield in the tweet, and uh, the Wine Shield people kind of, you know, caught wind of, of what went happened with pirates uh, stealing my booty, and they decided to send me a 12 pack of these Wine Shields. So it really is a, a different type of closure system. It comes with these um, retractable tweezers, and then the shields themselves, I mean, it's kind of like these plastic diaphragms and you use the tweezers to pull them out so you don't you know contaminate these things I'm gonna try to take one out never used these before and it looks like this little like uh, grape design those are little um those are those little like uh, what do we call those those inflatable packing uh, not peanuts but you know what I mean those things that pop like you like to pop them yeah. Uh, I'm going to figure it out right after I uh, finish this episode. But anyways, what you're supposed to do now is you use these tweezers to put it on top of your wine bottle. Let's hope I don't drop it. And then you just push it down inside. Woo. 
And so what it does is it's now, let's see if you can see this here. So it's opening up over the top of that wine and it's creating a barrier. So your wine is really gonna be limited with the amount of oxygen that the wine gets. Um, I, I know that Jeff uh, of The Lonely Vine, when he did it, he had some pretty good success with it after trying it over a couple of days. And so I figured what I'd do with this rosé is, is maybe come back to you in a day or two and, and talk to you about you know, how it was and see if these, uh, my tasting notes are, are the same and see if this rosé still holds up. Um, the other thing that was kind of neat though, I noticed this when I was, uh, when Kara opened up the wine, where are they? There's like these neat little crystals at the bottom of this wine. There, I hope you can see them. They're right there. Um, I was reading Martin Redman's blog from Enophiles. There you go. Two shout outs. Um, and he was talking about wine diamonds and I'd never seen any before. Uh, he was talking about finding them in white wines when uh, they aren't chilled uh, enough during fermentation. And uh, it's, it's nothing that's bad in the wine. It's just something aesthetically that's different. In white wines, you'll see them. You'll never see them in reds because they're just too dark to see. But I'm wondering, Martin, uh, have you ever seen these in rosés before? Because I think... Uh, I may have seen my first wine diamonds. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Just a quick, you know, seven minute episode. Just seeing how you guys are doing. I'll probably uh, jump back in on Friday or Saturday and, and retaste this wine again and, and see, how this, uh, see how this wine shield works. I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. Stay rad, everybody. Stay rad.